Welcome back, everyone. We'll be taking your calls today, so please pick up that phone. You know the number, 1-800-635-2673. Well, I tell you that Texas chili not only is satisfying and fantastic, it's a great way to get your antioxidants. So, Richard, that's a good yes. example yes, of just is. how you can incorporate good, healthy foods, get your antioxidants into that's your right. diet. That's right. So let's, let's talk a little bit about what yeah. antioxidants are and how they work, because this could be a mystery to a lot of people. Yeah, you know, when we use the term oxidation reduction, it reminds me of high school chemistry and all those yawner classes. Oh, that's do right. I have to listen to all this? Well, I was fascinated. I went on to get a chemistry degree in college. But this antioxidant concept, uh, it always leaves us with that, what are they really talking about? I mean, what mm -hmm. does that really mean? And I'm hoping to explain that to you today so you have an image because it's really vital to your health. In our bodies, with all those chemical reactions that occur without us ever even thinking about it, free radicals are created. And free radicals are small components of a molecule that are really charged with energy. And if these free radicals are allowed to run amok, they cause oxidative damage. And over time, it promotes disease such as arthritis, cancer, and heart disease. Now let me give you an example. And what an antioxidant does is it calms those free radicals down. Have you ever heard of that game, uh, the hot potato game? Mm -hmm. The potato comes out of the oven scorching hot. That's your free radical. And if you hold it in your hand, it causes damage. Well, when you don't have enough antioxidants in your system, those, those free radicals do you damage. But if you can bounce that thing around, throw it from person to person, cooling down, we diffuse that energy and we minimize the risk and the damage to our bodies. That's basically how antioxidants work. Let me give you another example. Those of you who live by the coastline of the ocean, you know how rust damaging promoting ocean mist can be in seawater. Any of you who have a boat or been in the Navy, you know how much effort the Navy dedicates to painting their ships to prevent rust. If we don't have antioxidants in our body, that same oxidative damage that can ruin steel <laughs> will ruin us. So it's a, the antioxidant is like the layer of paint that the Navy puts on the ship to protect their investment in these very expensive vessels. Same type of phenomena. So we're preventing rust with these antioxidants. Just think of it that way, and you really have the essence of antioxidants. Okay. Okay. Well, let's talk about the facts and maybe a little research. Yeah, well, these antioxidants are found in a wide variety of our foods. And we don't really think of them as essential. Some are essential to life, mm -hmm. like a vitamin. We have vitamin antioxidants, but there are other components of, of vegetable matter that are also act as uh, uh, antioxidants. And the sum of the research to this point today is the natural source antioxidants are always the best. Now, folks, recently there was a press release on a, uh, there was an article published in the Journal of the American Medical Association that showed taking antioxidants do not prolong life. In fact, it hastens death. And they paste this all over the evening news. They publish it out to all the doctors, but there were some critical flaws in this study. They did not use natural source antioxidants. They synthesized vitamins. They didn't take them from our foods. They didn't take them from what got the human race to this point in time. They created a study to debunk natural therapies. And it, I find that very offensive. Mm -hmm. And I don't think our audience, our people, are swallowing that baloney. I don't think so. I think we can see right through this. They do it all the time. They're really, the, the point I'm trying to make here is our natural source antioxidants are the way to go. These are primarily plant-based foods. Now, what's the, what do we know? 30% uh, of all Americans never eat a raw fruit. 40% never eat a raw vegetable. Is there any wonder why we have heart disease, cancer, and the numbers are increasing? We're not getting these antioxidants, mm -hmm. okay? Plant sources, that's your main source. Next. Okay. Well, how much do we need to eat? Well, to get abundant, uh, more than enough, of your antioxidants, you need the five to nine servings of fruits and vegetables every day, okay? A little research just gleamed in the last few months from antioxidant research. University of Illinois showed the shrinking of prostate tumors with combining these two vegetables, broccoli and tomato. That was in our news today. It is thought that this anti-cancer effect is through the antioxidant components in broccoli and tomato. 
pretty amazing mm -hmm. if you ask me. Mm -hmm. A British university found British university found that pancreatic cells are destroyed by the antioxidant capsaicin the hot component of peppers. See, these antioxidants are not only good for general health, they have anti-cancer properties. This is just in recent months here. Cornell University found that if you want the most powerful anti-cancer plan, bump your fruits and vegetables up to 10 to 12 servings a day. Really? That 10 is to the most a day. effective anti-cancer mm -hmm. plan that we know of today in that core, in that foundation, is 10 to 12 servings of fruits and vegetables a day. Now, I know that's hard to achieve. That's hard to achieve. And perhaps for, for many of us, what that means is we have a few grapes here, a carrot stick here or there, a slice of orange as opposed to a huge serving of fruits at a time. Your body constantly has that source of antioxidant fruits and vegetables in our bodies. That, for example, the tomato has over 10,000 phytochemicals in it. You can't match that in a drug. No. Ten it's a symphony. Thousand. It's a symphony of wow. molecules that, mm -hmm. that are handing back and forth that hot potato, mm -hmm. calming these metabolic processes down, protecting you from damage. Phytochemicals in cabbage and turnips, we now know, delay the growth of lung cancer. Cabbage and turnips. See, make your medicines your foods and your foods your medicine. That statement is over 2,000 years old. The brilliance of Hippocrates is coming forth today. It's in our foods. The secret to longevity is in our foods. We now have research that shows those who have abundant antioxidants in their diet have lower rates of arthritis. Arthritis is of all types. Cardiovascular disease, cancer, sun damage. Isn't that amazing? People who eat spinach mm -hmm. or chard, Swiss chard, three mm -hmm. times a week, 55% less risk of reoccurrence of skin cancers. And here we are slathering the chemicals all over us and veiling us from the sun and, and, and filtering out the vitamin D as we do it when really what we need to be doing is eating our greens. See, this is the yeah. type of power we're talking about, mm -hmm. folks. I know someone's watching today who has had a dozen skin cancers plucked off their skin mm -hmm. and they, they're afraid to go out. You've met people like oh, this. Yeah. They're afraid oh, yeah. to go out in the sun. They, don't, they can't go to the park with their grandkids and play. I can't get another skin cancer. Well, this type of research, the, this antioxidant power, the greens, the fruits, and the vegetables, I tell you, that's the way to go. Yeah, use mm -hmm. your sunscreen if you need it, but don't be afraid of that sun. Nutritionally support. Create a nutritional sunscreen. It's mm -hmm. the most effective way to do it. Isn't that amazing? 